Lesson from the Epistle of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Romans. Brethren, what things soever were written were written for our learning, that through patience and the comfort of the scriptures we might have hope. Now the God of patience and of comfort grant you to be of one mind one towards another, according to Jesus Christ, that with one mind and with one mouth you may glorify God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive one another, as Christ also hath received you unto the honor of God. For I say that Christ Jesus was minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, but that the Gentiles are to glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore will I confess to thee, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and I will sing to thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and magnify him, all ye peoples. And again Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise up to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope and in the power of the Holy Ghost. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, sending two of his disciples, he said to him, Art thou he that art to come, or do we look for another? And Jesus, making answer, said to them, Go and relate to John what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead rise again, the poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he that shall not be scandalized in me. And they went their way. Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, What do went you out into the desert to see, a reed shaken with the wind? But what went you out to see, a man clothed in soft garments? Behold, they that are clothed in soft garments are in the houses of kings. But what went you out to see, a prophet? Yea, I tell you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my angel before thy face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. Thus far the words of the Holy Gospel. First let us please kneel and um, we're playing for the souls of Marie Patton um, and Carl French, both of whom passed away this last week. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. And may their souls and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, Marie Patton was the sister of our parishioner, Ray Hines, and also the sister of another parishioner, Mrs. Catherine Holtz. Um, so she was also the aunt of, um, and great aunt of our other parishioners, who are the, the children and grandchildren of the people I mentioned. And Carl French was the father of Alan Crostick. So those are who they were. Okay, the litany of announcements. December 6th, the first, yes, this coming Tuesday, it, it is first Tuesday, 
Um, we will have the usual St. Philomena devotions uh, following the, so we'll have a 7 p.m. Mass followed by the St. Philomena devotions and the blessing with her relic. All are invited. Thursday, December 8th is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception and Holy Day of Obligation. Masses will be 7 a.m., noon, and 7 p.m. So 7, noon, 7. Next Sunday, December 11th, the $10,000 raffle will take place. Somebody's going to be very happy a week from today. Some three people, I hope. A pancake breakfast will be held after the 7.30 and 10 a.m. Masses. And you know, um, those are always really good deals. You get a great breakfast for like not very much. And then um, it's at, out there, they're gonna, draw the, um, they're gonna draw the winning tickets. So I don't know if there's any of those. Anybody know, is there, are there tickets left for sale? Are we, anybody? Yes. yes, okay. So there still are some tickets for sale. Um, if you were thinking about getting one, you, today's your day for that. Uh, okay, um, and the spiritual bouquet cards of the, uh, the Christmas novena, well, the twelve vena, for the twelve days of Christmas are available after each mass, and they are five buckaroos. Oh, speaking of masses, it's here. It's six bucks this year. Sorry for the inflation. Um, <laughs> yes, this is what third mortgages are all about the calendar going up by a dollar for the first time in like five years. Um, this is the calendar we produce, and it has a very long history. It was begun by an old um, priest of, uh, he was of the, I think he was of Precious Blood, or was he Divine Word? I forget which order. Oh no, he was a Passionist. And uh, he passed away many years ago. He had left it to the task to somebody who was in San Jose who could no longer do it. And then um, uh, they kind of, he, he dropped the ball. Somebody else took it who didn't know how to do it and it ended up being really ridiculous um, and a shame that trees died to produce it for a few years until Father Sotanovich and I took it up. He's the principal player. Um, I, I do the correct corrections and I think it's pretty, you know, accurate. I'd be surprised if we found any significant errors this year. But the reason I'm pushing it is, you all have to have one of these. Um, it's one of those things that, it, it, not only is it the best calendar of its kind, it's really what you need if you're going to follow the Mass at all. Because this is the only one that is pre-1955 and tells you basically how to set up your missiles for every single mass of uh, every day of the whole year. It'll tell you what the mass of the day is, what the commemorations, if there are any, what preface, you know, all this kind of stuff. So $6 well spent. Um, please uh, consider seriously, seriously getting one and then, then go ahead and get it after you consider. Um, okay, that's name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, amen. Sorry. Now everybody knows I want to see Kurt. Here we are the second Sunday of Advent, and I think it's still not too late to put Advent in its perspective for us. You know, frankly, I think we have a war going on, um, and I don't mean the, the usual overseas kinds of things. I mean, between, you know, there's this, always this tension between the world, as it were, in quotes, between secularism and rampant um, rampant capitalism and this kind of okay rampant capitalism and this kind of thing and then what the, the the church is is all about the things of the other world now Advent's an interesting example of that because we certainly know what rampant capitalism thinks of this Advent season there is no such thing as the Advent season it is, as far as they're concerned, it's been Christmas since August, right? It's all about get your stuff, okay? That's basically it. Um, they have sold people on the notion that 
uh, if you, it's kind of like um, the, the Democrats and public education, basically. That no matter how bad education is, the public education and, and all its problems that it has, their, their solution for it is always going to be throw money into it and it's going to fix it. Of course, they throw money into it, we don't know where it goes and it doesn't fix anything because our test scores are like the lowest in the whole world kind of thing. Well, they have sold people on the idea that if you throw money into this pursuit of happiness, that will somehow buy you the stuff that gives you happiness. And of course, that doesn't work either. The problem is, on the side of the church, we have a season. Now, it, it is, it is a, still a season. Um, we can perceive what its limits are. It begins on the Sunday closest to the Feast of St. Andrew, and of course ends at Christmas time. But we don't have instruction from the church on exactly what we're supposed to do with this season, frankly. You know, many years ago, and, but, and I'm talking many years ago, not, we're not talking in the 60s or 50s, unless you're talking like the year 60 or 50 or something like that. But many years ago, Advent was indeed a time of penance. Um, just as Lent is. In fact, it was called Little Lent in many places. But it ceased to be that over 800 years ago. It, um, so it's not one of these things that the modernists pulled on us for once. It, it, it's one of these things that the church decided that it was in the Roman rite not going to be a time of penance. But the, uh, some other rites petitioned to have it be. You know, within the church there are 20 some odd rites R-I-T-E-S, all of them as Catholic as we are. So, you know, there's the Ukrainians, there's the, um, the Ruthenians and all this kind of stuff, all these rites, Byzantine, Eastern. Well, rites such as the Ruthenians specifically have petitioned that this is a time of penance for them. These are days of fasting and, and abstinence and all kinds of stuff. But for us, we have to figure out what to do with it. <coughs> now, I have some suggestions, um, and I look at, because Advent means, as you all know by now, coming, the coming of, the arrival of. For those of you who know the Our Father in Latin, we say, thy kingdom come, adveniat regnum tuum, adveniat and Advent very obviously have the same roots, and it means some kind of coming. But what is it the coming of? Obviously, our Lord came um, you know, to Bethlehem, to the Blessed Virgin, um, 2,000 years ago. Uh, so we, we are preparing to celebrate the anniversary of that coming, his birthday, in other words. There's the coming um, that he will be for, for each of us as our judge when we die, or a particular judgment. That's another kind of coming. And then there's the coming at the end of the world, which is the third. I want to put these in the Advent context. Now, I kind of look at it like this for whatever it's worth to you. Um, and this is how I deal with the Advent season. Well, there's many, many factors. But. So let's say somebody is having an important event. Let's say a big birthday like 80, you know? Um, and some of you will say, well, I can't imagine 80. Others will say, well, 80 was a cinch. Um, we're looking forward to 100 now. But, or some, are, some of you passed 100, actually. <laughs> so, well, only one of you that I know of, unless some of the rest of you look mighty young for your age. Um, so, what, what do you do? Well, you know, when, when somebody turns 80, it's considered a milestone, that birthday. And so the, the family, the children, the grandchildren, they get together and sometimes for months they're planning things to do with that celebration. Um, they may have gatherings like, okay, let's all have dinner at my house this Sunday and we'll plan Granny's 80th and then next Sunday, this kind of thing. Well, we have something analogous to that. Um, now, if, if Granny is still with it, um, if you went up to her a month ahead of time and started saying happy birthday, she would say, well, what are you talking about? You see, my birthday's not for another month. So you wouldn't keep on doing that. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Pretty soon, 
poor Granny would start to wonder if she was losing it because she gets tired of telling you her birthday is a month away. So they wouldn't do that. Now in the same way then, we have this spiritual preparation for the three comings of Advent. Um, the, 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 the key thing to remember is that we're planning, and how do we plan? We plan by prayer, meditation. The liturgy is the best guide, really, in these things. Um, the, uh, the family customs, such as the lighting of the Advent wreath every Sunday, the, light, you know, the lighting of the different candles as we progress through the season. There are Christmas novenas. There's the St. Andrew prayer that you start to wonder, did I say it 14 times or 15 times? And today, oh, well, I better say another couple just to be on the safe side sort of thing. So there's, those are the spiritual preparations that we should do. Mind you, there is nothing to find by the church except the liturgy. So we have to do what we can in our own measure. Um, we still have the color of violet, which is the color of penance. Uh, one of the popes, a medieval pope, so it wasn't like a modernist either, wanted to change, in fact he did change, but nobody listened to him, um, the color of advent vestments to black. He wanted it to be like a funeral thing. Um, this didn't go over, and basically I think he gave up it because nobody, nobody did it. There was a petition by the bishops of the world to have blue introduced as the advent color, and Rome didn't feel that was appropriate. That was, that was still several years ago. Um, so we still have the color of penance, but no imposed penances. Now, while we have the color of penance, and we are expected to, for the second and third advents, meaning the coming of our Lord as individual judge on each of us, and then at the end of the world, we do take into account our need to do penance. Know that the church does not impose a specific penance, but we all need it. And so we, we do penances in, in the measure that we feel possible and practical as well during this season. On the other hand now, we have the get-togethers that happen during the Advent season. They call them Christmas parties. Okay, you can call them what you want. We can, you know, they're really Advent parties. Um, and, but, you know, that's all right. I mean, even traditional Catholics will have gatherings at their homes um, and leading up to Christmas, they'll have an, an open house or, or things like that. Uh, and, you know, that's all right. Those are the dinners to plan Granny's 80th kind of thing, if you want. Um, and when you're out in the, in the world, you know, we'll hear a lot of this happy holidays kind of thing. Now, I think it always rubs us the wrong way a little bit, but here's how I see that, too. Um, the Advent season is full of holidays. You know, there's the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, there's St. Viviana, there's, you know, all these saints and stuff, and of course every Sunday is a, a holiday and, and whatnot. So if somebody says ha happy holidays, well, you know what we mean by that. We don't mean Merry Christmas, so we, we would, wouldn't do to correct them, because unless they start saying happy holidays to, to December 26th, and then, then that's a problem. But in the meantime, if these good people who for political correctness or whatever say happy holidays to you, well, give them back a happy holidays. Um, you know, happy Feast of the Immaculate Conception to you too, or, or whatever. It doesn't all have to be negative, um, you know, because when they say happy holidays, it's like, well, they won't say Christmas. Well, well then, then again, they're right. It's not Christmas yet, so why say happy Christmas? All right, finally, um, please remember that Christmas season, now this is the big, the big thing that the world is the, the opposite of. The Christmas season begins at Christmas. It begins on midnight of December 25th. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, I, I don't mean don't put up your decorations and things like that. I just mean spiritually as a Catholic, keep it on the back burner that you do realize the Christmas season begins with Christmas and doesn't end with it. Um, you know, I was thinking of trying how to make this practical, and I thought about, well, suppose we were just going to insist on having all Christmas parties beginning 
with December 25th. Well, it would be, it would be a, a riotous brawl for 12 days. Everybody trying to fit their Christmas parties into the, those, those few days. So we have to give people, I guess, a, a little bit of leeway. And putting up your, your Christmas decorations, um, if you have them up already, fine. I would leave, uh, try to leave the baby Jesus out of the manger until um, the anniversary of his birth. That's, a, that's always a good one. Uh, or else just hold off on the decorations for maybe a week or so before the, you know, Christmas itself. I mean, I, mind you, I know we all have a lot to do too, and I, and I don't think there's anything wrong with getting in the spirit, even if it's a bit early, as long as we keep our, our main thrust before our eyes. So my dear faithful, that is my take on the Advent season. Um, I think we need to especially look at the liturgy, look at your missal, look at the orations, particularly of the Mass. That's the, um, the, or the oratio, the secret, and the post-communion. In any liturgical season, the church will put all of its meaning into those three things and into the readings of the season. And from that you can derive our Catholic response in, where we are truly preparing for our Lord and in preparing for him, we realize our need that we should make good confessions, we should um, do some penance. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, amen.